Welcome back to Acre Homestead. My name is Becky, if you are new, and today we are gonna be talking about the 2023 Pantry Challenge, and I'm so excited that it is here. It is January 3rd, so we're getting started a little bit late, but that's okay, better late than never. I have, I went grocery shopping before January 1st. I'm going to first go over the rules that I'm following this year for the Pantry Challenge and the reasons why we do a Pantry Challenge, and then I'm gonna show you the haul that we did, we went grocery shopping together to kind of prepare for pantry challenge. It's not a bulk order. We did a Costco haul, a Winco haul, and I did before the day baby was born, I had an Azure haul and I'm gonna show you, it's very small, but I'm gonna show you what I got there so that you can kind of see what groceries I'm starting with. We did need a little few groceries before pantry challenge started, but I didn't go buy a bunch of stuff. Now, if you are new to this pantry challenge, this pantry challenge is hosted, I think for the last four or five years by Jessica from Three Rivers Homestead. She's got a YouTube channel and a very active Instagram account. And her number one rule for everybody that participates in this pantry challenge is that you get to make up your own rules. <laughs> so some of my rules are the same from last year. Some of them are new this year to myself. What she does typically is she doesn't go grocery shopping at all for the month of January and February, and she shops her pantries, her freezers, and what she's put up over the year for those two months. Except for she does put in a bulk citrus order in January because citrus is in season. And a lot of what we do around our homesteads is that we try to put things up in our pantries and in our freezers when they're in season. And I think because she just had a baby, she's giving herself grace that if she needs to do a little bit of grocery shopping, she is gonna be doing that. And you're gonna see that some of that, there might be some similarities with me on that. But I'm gonna go over first what my rules are. And I hope it's you find interest in this and that if you're participating, you come up with your own rules that fit your family. My rules, my number one rule is that I'm gonna set a $50 budget for the month of January and February. So my goal is to not go over spending $100 at the grocery store for the month of January and February. Now, I don't have any dairy animals on my homestead. My chickens are not laying eggs. I do have some eggs that are in the freezer. I have some freeze dried eggs, but not much. And so I am going to be giving myself that $50 budget. Last year it was $40, but with inflation, I gave myself an extra $10 per month for dairy some fresh produce if we need it, and for eggs. And so that is my first rule. We're gonna try to spend less than $100 at the grocery store for January and February. My second rule is that I'm gonna be going through my pantry and I'm gonna be picking out items that I really want to make sure that we use before they go bad. Because I know that I have things in my upstairs pantry, in my downstairs pantry that have been sitting there for quite some time and they're not bad yet, but I wanna try to prioritize those items to get them used up before they go bad. If you are interested in what my pantries look like, I can leave a link for that video and you can see where we're starting because I went into very in-depth detail of what my pantries look like. I not only wanna make sure I go through my pantry and I look for those pantry items, but I also am gonna be going through my freezers and we are gonna be picking out things. I know that there are quite a few cuts of meat that have been in my freezer for quite some time, and it, like, for example, smoked ham hocks, some pork ribs, and things that I just don't gravitate and grab that often that have been sitting in there for a long time, and I wanna make sure that during this pantry challenge, I try to get those things out of my freezer. My number three rule, this is a fun rule, this is a rule we had last year, is that once a week, I am gonna be attempting a new recipe. I'm going to be trying to push my culinary skills a little bit by trying a recipe I've never tried before. And a couple of the things on my, I've just kind of jotted down a couple things that I want to do is I want to get into doing some cheese making possibly. I have all these ingredients or all the supplies to do some cheese making and I want to have this be kind of an excuse to like push myself to go ahead and dive into that realm. I want to make tamales for the first time. And there's just a couple other things I want to learn to make um, pot stickers or like an Asian style dumpling. And I would like to learn to make phyllo dough from scratch. So these are just a couple things that I've been 
kind of playing around in my head that I think it would be kind of fun. And if we make phyllo dough, I know that I have nuts in my pantry and in my freezers that need to be used up, and so we could make some baklava with homemade phyllo dough. So these are just examples of things where I'm going to be using pantry items of things I know that need to be used up, while also pushing my culinary skills, learning something new, and figuring out if it's something fun that I want to do on a more regular basis, or if it's something that I want to do one time, I've checked it off the list, I've made it awesome, and then we just move on from there. So that's what I really like about this pantry challenge, is that I kind of put some fun rules in here like this that just make this more fun and exciting, and it also is a good excuse to push myself to learn some new skills. My fourth rule, this is a new rule that I did not follow last year, and this rule is we are going to be doing one food preservation project a week as well. So we're going to do one new recipe a week and one new food preservation project a week. The reason for this is because we were moving during the height of harvest this last year and a lot of the stuff I harvested just got thrown in freezers. And freezing is a great way to preserve stuff, but I know that it's not the final product I want. For example, I have a ton of frozen tomatoes in my upstairs freezer and I need to turn those into something. I'm thinking I'm going to try making a traditional barbecue sauce with those because I've never made that before. So that could be rule number three and four, food preservation project and trying a new recipe. And I harvested from this new homestead probably six gallons of strawberries and those bags of strawberries are just sitting in my freezer and I have a couple ideas. I want to make some homemade strawberry lemonade concentrate and get that canned. I need to make some more strawberry jam and I know that I have quite a few things like that where I just threw stuff in the freezer and I know that I need to get those out of the freezer for a couple reasons. One, I want to turn them into the final product. I want them and I want to get them out of my freezer and onto my pantry shelf so they're shelf stable. And two, my fifth rule that I'm going to be doing during this pantry challenge is I want to get my two deep freezers organized. When we moved, I just threw everything into totes. We moved it and then I threw all those things into the freezer. So my two deep freezers downstairs in my pantry are a disaster. Normally I would do a freezer tour to show you what's in my freezers to start this pantry challenge, but they are so disorganized I cannot show you them. So we'll organize them together. So my pantry challenge rules are almost like the every bit counts challenge and pantry challenge because we're gonna be doing some food preservation projects this winter and trying to use up our pantry items. Now, I did not participate in the every bit counts challenge this August that is also hosted by Jessica at Three Rivers Homestead because we were moving and it was just not practical for us to for me to preserve something every single day. And even still, I am not the type of person that has the time or it, it, the best way I have found for myself to do food preservation projects, and you probably have seen this, is I like doing big day, a whole day or afternoon where I preserve a ton of stuff instead of doing a little bit every day. But that's the beauty is that we all just learn and figure out what's best for us. And what's gonna work for me is I'm gonna take one day a week and we're gonna be doing a food preservation project probably more than one each day, but we're gonna be working on getting stuff preserved or out of the freezer. Technically, they're already preserved because they're in the freezer, but getting things out of the freezer, either freeze-dried, dehydrated, cooked and eaten, or put into a canning jar and put on the pantry shelf to enjoy later. So those are the rules that I'm following. I'm giving myself grace by allowing myself to go to the grocery store. I did just have a baby and I want to not put so much pressure on myself. I want this pantry challenge to be fun. So if I need to take some of that $50 a month budget and I need to buy hamburger buns instead of buying a dairy product, I'm gonna do that. But I would like to make hamburger buns from scratch because I do have all this stuff. And I have a ton of wheat berries. That was another thing I didn't put on here but I do want to get back into the habit of grinding my own wheat berries and cooking with fresh ground wheat. And also I've made yogurt. I put yogurt on my trying a new recipe every, you know, once a week, but I know how to make yogurt and I want to get back in the habit of making my own yogurt, making my own sour cream. And so I'm going to use this pantry challenge to help kind of push me to get back into those habits of those things. When we were moving, and harvest and all of that stuff was happening it was not a realistic or a 
thing that I, I a couple things I had to just put on the back burner and that's totally fine but now that baby and I are getting into a rhythm with Josh it's winter time I do not have a big garden going right now I can hopefully start getting back in the habit of those getting those to be a normal part of my routine so that by the time we get back into gardening and harvesting they'll be just a normal habit and I'll be used to having those in my routine a little update on the garden we are breaking ground on January 9th so hopefully well not hopefully we are breaking ground January 9th and so the garden is going to be underway which is really exciting I have no idea how long it's gonna to take to get the garden fully up and going but all I know is we are breaking ground on January 9th and I just received three out of the six seed catalogs I ordered so this week I'm gonna be sitting down and going through my seed catalogs I'm pretty excited about that now that goes into talking about gardening. Why are we doing this pantry challenge? I'm someone that always likes to know the why behind things. I think we're more likely to do things or be motivated if we understand the why behind we are doing something. One of the number one reasons why is I wanna use up the produce I preserved last year, this year, before I go into preserving again next year so that I can make room for next year's food preservation projects. You may have seen my pantry and you think, oh my goodness, that's so much. But my goal is not to have 10 years, five years, 30 years of food storage. My goal is to have one or two years of food storage. And that's mostly because I don't wanna necessarily preserve the same thing every year. So if I make a huge batch of salsa or enchilada sauce, I would like that to last for maybe one or two growing seasons so that I don't have to preserve the same thing every single year. It can keep my food preservation projects new and exciting and I'm not having to do every single food preservation project every single year and having that be completely overwhelming because I have just too many things that I need to preserve. So if I can preserve two years worth of something, then that is kind of now my gold standard, kind of what I'm wanting to do but I need to make sure that I'm working through those things so that, so, cause some things I can't preserve. I didn't preserve a year's worth of green beans. And so I just need to make sure that I'm going through those things. I have fresh onions down there in the pantry. I need to make sure I'm going through those things cause those fresh onions are not gonna last fresh for longer than this year. And these items that we preserve, whether we can dehydrate, freeze dry or freeze, they are not gonna stay super fresh for an indefinite amount of time. I guess freeze dried stuff, if you put it in a Mylar bag, it can stay fresh for 30 years. But like I said, that is not my goal when it comes to food preservation. My goal is to just grow as much as I can, support local farmers, and enjoy the best quality food I can for the best price. And so by making sure I go through this stuff, then I'm not wasting money if it's gonna be going bad. The second reason why we do this is to cycle through our dry bulk storage. So that is why I want to start grinding some of my own wheat and getting back into the habit of that. Wheat berries can last 15, 20 years if stored properly, but I don't want to keep wheat berries around for that long. That's not my goal. I have wheat berries downstairs. I have not been using them. I want to get in the habit of using them. And so by doing this challenge, it is going to be getting me in that habit of cycling through my dry bulk storage. Third reason why I'm doing this is to save money. I know that I have random things in my pantry, in my freezers, tucked away in cupboards, things that I have maybe purchased for a recipe and I have half of that item left and it's just been sitting in my pantry. If I don't ever use the rest of that item, then that is a waste of money. So my goal is to be using up some of those random things that I have around my pantry so that I can not waste that and I can make sure I use it. Another way that this pantry challenge is gonna save me money is it is going to have me in the grocery store less. My goal is to only go grocery shopping once a month if I can. And so what that does is it then forces me to stay out of the grocery store. And I can tell you every single time I go into a grocery store, I make more than one impulse buy. And so by staying out of the grocery store, I'm gonna be making fewer and fewer impulse buys. So that is another way it can save me money. And then the third way it's gonna save me money is I'm gonna be using the produce that I already purchased or already grew in my garden and I'm not gonna be just running to the grocery store and picking up a zucchini when I already have preserved zucchini that I need to go through first. 
if that makes sense. So that is how it's going to be helping save on my budget. Another cool thing that this pantry challenge does is it helps prevent food waste. I'm going to be extremely intentional on making sure that I do not have food waste. And a couple ways I'm going to be doing that is just making sure that anything I cook or preserve, we eat. I do have chickens. And so technically most things, even if I do if it's food waste, it goes to the chicken, so I turn it into eggs. But my goal is to try to have any human food that I make, Josh and I are able to consume, and that we're also not having food waste. It can also cut down on just waste in general because the goal is to be buying no packaged food at the grocery store. I'm gonna be trying to use up as much of my home canned, and home preserved things as much as possible. So we're gonna be hopefully cutting down on some packaging. If I make a gallon of yogurt homemade, then that's cutting down on the plastic tubs of the quart size yogurts that I buy. So that's going to be reducing waste. Now, the only thing that goes to this, that kind of goes along with this is Josh is an autonomous adult. He is not participating in this pantry challenge. I mean, he is in that he doesn't really cook around the house. I do 99% of the cooking. So he's participating by proxy. He doesn't really have a choice, but if he decides that he wants to go buy a snack, that's fine. That This is my pantry challenge and he can do whatever he wants. He's a grown adult. But my goal is to try to keep yummy, healthy snacks around here, whether I make some homemade crackers or I make homemade cookies or homemade treats so that he doesn't find the need to go buy store-bought cracker. He doesn't buy cracker. He does. Well, Anyway, enough about Josh, but so that he doesn't find the need to go buy snacks. If I can try to keep some homemade snacks around, then he will find that less uh, appealing, if that makes sense. So that is enough about that. Now, the fifth reason why I'm doing this is for education. I want to learn what did I grow enough of or buy from local farmers and preserve enough of last year. And do I need to preserve that same amount for this next year? Or do I need to preserve more of it? Did I not preserve enough of it? Or did I preserve way too much of it and we don't even like to eat it? So it's gonna help teach us what I need to be planting more, what I need to be sourcing from local farmers more, and what I do not need to grow or preserve next year because we just don't like it. And that goes same for bulk food items. Are there items that are in my pantry or dry good items when I, I said bulk food items, but I mean like dry good items, the things that I buy in bulk from Azure, like beans and rice and things like that. Are there things that, did I buy a 25 pound bag of something and I just really realized that that, we don't need a 25 pound bag of that moving forward. So it's a great way to learn what your family likes to eat, what they gravitate towards and what do they not gravitate towards. That's just as important because if I am buying and storing food that Josh and I just don't eat, then that's a waste of money, it's a waste of space, it's a waste of resources, and it kind of makes you feel guilty inside because you have food or things sitting around that aren't being used. So that is a really, really key beneficial thing for doing this pantry challenge. And the last way we're gonna learn is we're gonna learn new skills because if I can't go out and buy it, then I have to make it or I get to make it. So it's gonna be fun. So I'm really, really excited about this pantry challenge. I am giving myself grace this year. I did just have a baby. I'm gonna bring you along through the whole entire thing so you can see how well I did, where we do really well, where maybe we drop the ball a little bit. I don't think that, I mean, I guess unless I completely abandoned the pantry challenge, there, um, there's no real failures because we can learn through this whole process. I did go grocery shopping. I'm looking at my grocery haul right now. I'm about to show it to you, but this was a very last minute grocery shopping trip. I didn't put a ton of thought into it. And then we lost the grocery list halfway through our grocery shopping. So I do feel like I kind of prepared, but I also feel like I didn't prepare at all for this because I did just have a baby and we're just kind of, jumping head first into it. So let's get into the grocery haul so you can see what fresh items I purchased. And I hope you're excited about this pantry challenge. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm excited for getting my freezer organized. I'm excited for learning some new skills. And I'm really excited about getting some of those things preserved up and out of my freezer and onto the pantry shelf that I just didn't have time to do this year.
The first haul I'm gonna go over is my Azure haul. It's really little. This was actually the haul that I was supposed to pick up the day that I went into labor. I got a thing of frozen peas, which I'm glad I did because my Costco did not have frozen peas. I also had ordered a five, bag, five pound box of frozen grain beans, but Azure did not have them. And neither did my Costco, which is really weird. So I, I'm glad I have this now. And then I got a thing of European style yogurt. They did not have the Greek style yogurt this time, which I was a little sad about, but I got this. I can use this yogurt though to make my own homemade yogurt. Do you see where it says living yogurt cultures? And it has this list of bacteria. There's one, two, three, four, five bacteria that are listed here. This is a living probiotic yogurt and I can use it to make my own homemade sour cream. And I wanna get back into making my own sour cream. For years I made my own sour cream and yogurt, but I had to give it up and I'm excited to get back into it. So uh, these are two things I got from Azure. I need to run downstairs and I'll show you what I got from Azure that I've already, or Josh put it away for me because he went and picked it up two days after I gave birth when we were home from the hospital the first time. Another thing I ordered were three of these 50 pound bags of organic chicken feed. So I got three bags. And then I also got a 10 pound bag of oyster shells. One question I get asked all the time is why do I feed my chickens eggshells? And the reason is because little chickens, their eggs are about 99% or not, I don't know the percentage, but a very high percentage, those little eggshells are mostly calcium. And if they just continue to produce eggs after eggs after eggs, and you're not supplementing that calcium, they're gonna become calcium deficient pretty quickly. And so when they're laying a bunch, I can just give them their eggshells back. And I can give them the eggshells from the store-bought eggs, and I will do that. But because they're not laying right now and they're molting, or they're just finished molting, meaning they're losing all their feathers and they're getting new feathers, then that takes a lot of energy. So I bought oyster shells to help supplement that calcium. Oyster shells are another thing that are almost 100% calcium. And so that's a great resource if you don't have access to egg shells to give them oyster shells. So that's what I bought there. And then I also got a whole entire case of avocado oil because I was out of avocado oil. And this is avocado oil that's produced in California and it was on sale. So I went ahead and got a whole case, which should be enough avocado oil to last me a long time. Another thing that was on sale was powdered sugar, organic powdered sugar. I make my own powdered sugar quite often, but this is a convenience item. It's already pre-made. It's very expensive for me to find organic powdered sugar. I can find it in my grocery stores, but it's very expensive. So since it was on sale, I went ahead and purchased six bags of that. But you know what? I think I got that in a different grocery haul. I think I may have got, now I can't remember <laughs> because things got put away. And I think that was it that was all down here. And so let me show you one thing that I know we're gonna be working on using up a ton of during this pantry challenge since we're down here. And that's my potatoes because they are starting to grow eyes. So we are going to really have a very potato heavy diet. And then we're also going to preserve these up in a few different ways. When it comes to, you know, having a stocked pantry, I'm trying to think of things for not only Josh and I, but also my animals. So you will see I purchased 150 pounds of chicken feed. That's gonna last me for a long time. They go through, I don't know, I think a bag a month or so. And so I'm not only trying to think of keeping a stocked pantry for me, but for my chickens, and also my dogs. So anytime I go to Costco, now we're getting into the Costco haul, I always buy two bags of dog food. I do this for a couple of reasons because I don't wanna run out of dog food, but I also try to limit my grocery shopping even when I'm not in a pantry challenge because every time I go to the store, things find their way into my cart. And so I've just found for personally for me, Trying to keep a stock pantry keeps me out of the grocery store and it really does help save money. So two bags of dog food, three bags of chicken feed, and now we're getting into the human food. This is something you have never seen in any of my grocery hauls and that is brown sugar because I always make my own homemade brown sugar, but we're gonna be doing a lot of 
candy making this Valentine's Day. And I wanted to make sure I had something that had a very specific ratio of brown sugar to sugar so that my candy recipes would be as accurate as possible. Because candy is something that you wanna make sure you follow the recipe pretty exact. So that is why I purchased this. I wanted to do a bunch of candy making this Christmas, but with having a baby, that just did not happen. So we're gonna push it out for Valentine's Day and we're gonna make a bunch of candies at Valentine's Day, which I think will be just as fun. Before we go any farther, I need to wrap baby up because he needs his mom. And so we're gonna wrap him up and we will finish this grocery haul. Baby is fed. He, I tried putting him in the sling and he wants to do his little wiggles. So he's in the bassinet next to us wiggling away so we can continue on our grocery haul. So now we've talked about the brown sugar. Oh, the next thing we're gonna talk about is coffee. I ran out of coffee last year during pantry challenge, so I was not about to run out of coffee again this year. Now, I normally just buy Pete's coffee, and I like that, but they didn't have it at my Costco this time, so I'm trying a new coffee. It smells really good through the bag. I like a medium or a light roast, and this just sounded good. I live next to Portland, Oregon, and so I thought that I would try this local coffee. So these are whole beans, so I do have a coffee grinder, so I'll probably grind like half the bag at a time. I don't fresh grind it every day. I don't have time for that. So I'm excited to give this a try. Now I did get quite a bit of produce. So the first thing I got were these tomatoes and I looked for the tomatoes that were packed on the closest date to the date that I bought these so that it would give me a longer shelf life in order to use them up. These definitely have some ripening they can do these tomatoes and so we'll be able to enjoy those at some point. And then we've got some bananas for fresh eating. I went with as green as possible. So that would give me as long as time to use that up. I got a pineapple. I've been really wanting to make a fresh pineapple salsa. And I have a ton of tomatoes down in the pantry that need to be used. And so I think we'll probably end up making salsa out of this pineapple. And we'll use our freeze dried cilantro and it's gonna taste fantastic. And then we also, this is what we're gonna have for dinner tonight. I've been really wanting a big salad for dinner because we've had a lot of like freezer meals and casserole type things from the food train and just what I've made. And so I bought a big bag of romaine lettuce and we'll probably eat two of these for dinner tonight along with, I did get out to thaw. This is the lemon chicken and I need to put it in the fridge because it's just now ready to go in the fridge. I might cook that on the grill. I might cook it in the oven. I don't know, but that's gonna be dinner tonight. We're gonna make a big Caesar salad with that marinated chicken. I used to think that why would you make marinated chicken or marinated meats to go in the freezer? Because it doesn't take any time to marinate meats. But the reason I love it so much is I took that chicken out of the freezer maybe a couple, two hours ago. And now that it's basically thawed, I'm gonna throw it in the fridge and we're not gonna have dinner for another probably three or four hours or five hours. And so that whole time that it's been thawed sitting in the fridge, it's marinating. I didn't have to get out all the ingredients this morning make the marinade and then pop it in the fridge for it to have time to marinate. I just had to take it out of the freezer, let it thaw, and now it's marinated. And that is why I love having homemade marinated meats in my freezer. One thing, if you've been following me for any length of time, you know my green bean harvest was very sad this year. So I did just pick up a big bag of fresh green beans from the store and that does remind me I am missing something from this haul on the table. I wanted to get some frozen green beans at Costco. Costco didn't have frozen green beans, which is so weird. And so I did get six bags of the little bags of frozen green beans at Winco. And then I wanted some convenience items. And so I got this creamy Italian chopped salad kit. Now I've never tried this before, so I don't know if it's gonna be any good from Costco. But the cool thing about this kit is it has like cabbage and some carrots and heartier vegetables in it. So this is gonna last longer than my romaine lettuce. So we're gonna try to eat as many salads with this first, and then we're gonna go on to this. Going along with salads, I wanted to get some feta cheese. I like putting feta cheese in my salads. And then I also got this because I really want to try, now I'm so late to the game. I'm talking a year and a half late to the game. But that there was that really famous TikTok feta cheese cherry tomato pasta recipe that was going around. And I have cherry tomatoes frozen, I believe. And so I can make the frozen, I can use the frozen tomatoes with the feta cheese to try making that viral TikTok 
feta tomato pasta dish. So I'm gonna try making that. <laughs> I just never had enough feta in the house to do that, and so I haven't made it. So even though that was going around TikTok, I think a year and a half ago, we're gonna try making it during pantry challenge. I probably have about eight apples in my fridge still, but I wanted to get some more fruit. So I got some oranges. These will last a long time. We've already opened these up because we made some orange cranberry scones for New Year's Day brunch. Big bag of carrots. And I got this because when you're doing a pantry challenge or when you're trying to only go grocery shopping once a month, it's really good to get vegetables like carrots and cabbage and things that will last a really long time in the fridge. So what you do is you eat through the, the kind of more tender things first like your lettuces, zucchinis, um, peppers, tomatoes, you eat those first. And then once you go through those, then you start eating those more heartier vegetables like your carrots, your cabbage. And that way you can try to stretch out times between going to the grocery store while still having fresh produce in your diet. I wanna do quite a bit of baking during this pantry challenge. So I did go ahead and get a two pound block of yeast. I do have yeast in my house, but my yeast has been acting a little bit funny. So I wanted to get a fresh block of yeast. I have not gotten into sourdough as much as I would love to one day get into sourdough. That is not part of my life right now. So a big block of yeast it is. I'm gonna take probably about this much of it or so, put it in my cupboard. The rest of it is gonna go in the freezer. So it'll hopefully stay nice and fresh in the freezer until I need to take some of it out to use it. Baby Acre decided to join the party. So now we're gonna start talking about dairy. I normally like to order most of my cream and half and half through Azure because I can get organic and I can't get organic at Costco, but I did not do an Azure, well, my next Azure haul wouldn't be till the end of January. So I went ahead and picked up a half gallon of half and half for my coffee and a half gallon of heavy cream for cooking, making sour cream, I don't know, but I bought it. And then I bought a two gallon box of organic whole milk. We cannot go through this before it is gonna go bad. So what I'm gonna do is take one of these half gallons, put it in the fridge. The other half gallons are gonna, the three other ones are gonna go into the freezer. And maybe we'll make one of these into yogurt. And then I will show you how to make it into yogurt and then I can show you how to turn it into Greek yogurt. So I might not freeze all of these right away. You all know my chickens are not laying eggs right now. So I did pick up two, two dozen eggs and I got one organic and one not organic because there's an egg shortage in my area. Let me know if there's an egg shortage where you live, but there was only three packages of organic eggs in all of Costco when I went. And the lady, when I checked out, was surprised that there was even eggs left. And I was at Costco, I think at 3 p.m. She said they sell out in the mornings because there's so few eggs right now. So I picked up, and there was a limit of two. So I picked up one organic because I didn't want to take two out of the three organics that were there, and then just one regular. There is a bird flu that is causing part of this egg shortage. So that is why there's an egg shortage in my area. I did just find some frozen eggs in my freezer. So that's exciting. So we need to use those up. So we'll make sure we use those during this pantry challenge. Those were ones that I preserved up before we even moved. So I, I'm glad to find those. That right there is my Costco haul. So it wasn't a huge Costco haul. And this is my Winco haul and this is even smaller. So the one thing like I said earlier that's not shown here is that there were six bags of frozen green beans. I also got some zucchini. I, I bought five zucchinis. I've used two of them already. I made some barbecue pizza and I used that in the barbecue pizza. We got some organic sour cream. My Winco does carry organic sour cream at a great price. So I went ahead and picked up three of those. I can use this to make my own homemade sour cream too as a starter because it has the live active cultures in it. And so we've got that. We have one head of cauliflower, two cabbages. These are probably gonna be some of the last things we eat when it comes to produce because those are gonna last a really long time along with those carrots. And then this is something we're gonna be preserving up here really quick. This is probably gonna be one of our first food preservation projects. Most of the time, a package this size of cranberries in my area costs, I think $2.99 or $3.99. I think it's $2.99. These were $1.50 a bag. And I want to make some more cranberry sauce because I'm getting low already on the cranberry sauce we made last year. And I loved having that on my pantry shelf. 
So we're going to go ahead and turn these into some cranberry sauce or maybe even cranberry juice. I should have bought more because I've got that steam juicer. Now I'm regretting only getting three packages. I got that steam juicer and I could easily steam these and turn them into cranberry juice. Hmm, maybe I'll go back and I won't count that. No, I'm not gonna do that. Maybe I'll just turn these three bags into cranberry juice. We'll have to see what I end up doing with it. But that is my haul. So it's not a huge haul, but this will last us a long time. And I'm excited for this pantry challenge. I think it's gonna be fun. It's gonna push our culinary skills. It's going to push our creativity. It's gonna get things out of my pantry and out of my freezer that I really wanna make sure we use before they go bad. It's gonna save on my grocery budget. This is a perfect time to save and pull back on my grocery spending because we are gonna be putting a ton of resources into this garden. And that's the thing, when we were moving, we did a ton of pantry cooking, pantry things because we were needing to pull back on the grocery budget. That's the beauty of having a fully stocked pantry is when you need to reallocate where your funds are going and kind of rebudget to make sure that you have the money going where you need it to go at that time is that if you have a fully stocked pantry, you can start reallocating where those pennies go. And I need my pennies going into my garden so that we can have an abundant garden hopefully this next year. And by not spending it at the grocery store, when I have enough stuff in my house that we can eat, then that's one way we can do it. So I hope this was encouraging. I hope this is exciting for you. If you wanna watch, I filmed every single dinner that I made last year along with some breakfast and lunch ideas. I can put that playlist right here of the pantry challenge last year. I might go through and get some inspiration to see what I did last year. And then I can put another video down here you can go enjoy between now and my next upload if you enjoyed this. I hope you're excited, I'm excited. Oh, let me show you one thing. This just happened. If you watched, I just plucked four branches from my fig tree last at the old house and I just put them in water and they sprouted leaves. How cool is that? I'm really excited about that. So I need to get those planted, not put outside yet, it's too cold, but I need to get them in some dirt I think now. Enough rambling, I am rambling. So I just wanna say thank you for taking time out of your day to spend time with me. If you're participating in this challenge, please let me know what rules you are following. I love hearing about everybody's rules. That's the fun thing about this challenge is that we all get to make up our own rules and it just is super inspiring to see what other people's rules are and I just love it. So thank you for being you, thank you for being here and I can't wait to see you next time. Bye friend.